Hello and welcome back to this episode of Front Seat to Climate Change. As the new year starts, we wanted to talk about the air quality crisis that plagues Pakistan right now. Pakistan's air quality issues date back to several years, but it became into focus in the year 2017 when the New York Times carried a front page story of the Lahore smog. Soon after the Lahore High Court came into action, the Lahore High Court also formed a smog commission that was meant to explore the causes behind this hazardous air quality. Now what exactly is air quality? Air quality is simply a measure of how clean is your air. It is measured in the form of AQI or air quality index and pollutants such as nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide in particulate matter feature into it. Particulate matter is among the most dangerous and harmful for the human body and within Pakistan's context it's also one of the highest. Pakistan was ranked the second most polluted country on the basis of particulate matter. Similarly, University of Chicago's Air Quality Life Index measures the amount of years an average person can lose by breathing in dirty air. A citizen living in Lahore is said to have lost 5 years of their lives already. Now, why is the situation so bad? We try to get some answers from air quality expert Abid Umar who leads the Pakistan Air Quality Initiative. As we know, Lahore uh, has an extreme air pollution problem to the extent that um, it's hard to be outside on the roads, there's no visibility, it's difficult to breathe. People uh, complain that they're coughing all the time, their eyes are watering from the chemicals in the air. What happens in Punjab is you have an effect called the temperature inversion where as this hot air is rising, it reaches a blanket of cold air and it stays trapped in the lower atmosphere. And that leads to uh, emissions going, uh, the concentration of these emissions going out of control where we see hazardous air quality throughout the fifth season of smog. So the WHO calls for five micrograms per cubic meter of particulate matter pollution. Um, the numbers you find in Lahore are easily, on average throughout the year, 100 micrograms. So we're talking about 20 times above the safe limit. And that's the annual average. When you look uh, uh, within the smog season itself, those numbers go up to be not 20 times higher, they go up to 50 times higher, sometimes even 100 times above safe limits. It is also important to look into the scientific evidence. A handful of reports have come out which mention that the transport sector, industrial sector and power sector are among the primary pollutants. Similarly, a report has also said that crop burning, especially in the months of October and November, adds to all of this pollution as well. What are the public health impacts? We talked to physician and public health expert Dr. Zulfikar Mir to explain us what are the consequences for the population as a whole and also vulnerable demographics. Problem with smog is that, you know, these are industrial pollutants. They, the human beings have not evolved to, to take care of them. Uh, their regular immune systems, our immune systems are not programmed to take care of uh, industrial industrial pollutants, you know, unlike germs and viruses and all other organisms, we can our immune system can handle them. So obviously, we see a clear divide that uh, you know amongst the rich and the poor. So the poor, rich, the poor, the the poor elderly, the poor children, the poor pregnant women, they are you know exponentially more you know, you know susceptible to the effects of uh, you know. Uh, of smog and that's where we see the bulk of the mortality the death rates coming from get out of Lahore that is the first thing I would recommend you know obviously that's not a practical I'm being facetious here Lahore is unlivable right now you know and a medical emergency has to be declared uh, in Lahore during these months Lahore it, it, it is hazardous to live in Lahore it seems that the provincial governments and the federal government does not have the political will to act to resolve the crisis of poor air quality. One of the interventions that the government has come up with is closing down offices and schools in an effort to reduce traffic. But it does not really target the transport sector itself by providing clean fuel or reducing the amount of vehicles on the road for a long term. What it has led to is affecting education and also education attainment and the results. Smog has caused a citywide closure of all educational institutes on Fridays and Saturdays, which has caused us to miss multiple classes at a crucial time when our mids are just about to begin. Uh, similarly, uh, the school administration has cancelled all uh, PE periods and all recreational trips that had been planned uh, for the winter break. I've also noticed that uh, in the past few weeks, attendance has dropped significantly, not only in A-level talks, but also at the school, 
uh, over the past few weeks, primarily due to health reasons. Uh, I myself contracted uh, sore throat and I had to miss school for two days in the past uh, week. It definitely was better in the past because even though there was stuff like cancellation of outdoor activities, there was not a lot of like health issues uh, being created. Well, closing down schools is a very short-term step because, and frankly, it's not practical because while private schools, when schools are shut down, they go online. Government schools will not be able to go online due to logistical reasons. So, closing down schools is something which we cannot resort to every single year for like three months in during the winters. The right to a healthy life is actually a constitutionally guaranteed right. Now, with causes known and various models from around the world to emulate, the only thing that seems to be missing is political will and good intentions. And for that, we look towards the government of Pakistan and the government of various provinces.